On a Thursday morning, we head for Munich for a little while as Mary Badami says good morning to us with a little session of girl talk. Good morning. This is Mary Badami for Tempo. Have you ever noticed how many songs center on the theme of parting? Think of leaving on a trip or moving away. Within the last few years, we've had the Rose Garden singing the next plane to London. We've had Peter, Paul, and Mary singing I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know when I'll be back again. Think of changing from one phase of life to another. Do you remember Judy Holliday in the Broadway show Bells Are Ringing? Sadly singing, the party's over, it's time to call it a day. Or perhaps you saw middle-aged Joe in the play Damn Yankees, accepting a bargain with the devil, leaving his wife to become young again and play baseball, singing his farewell, goodbye old girl, my old girl. Old Lang Syne is such a popular yet sad song at New Year's and other kinds of partings. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, let's drink a cup for old time's sake. And on AFN, you often hear a request on the 1505 to Nashville for a dedication of Happy Journey and Auf Wiedersehen. Such songs simply reflect the truth that life is made up of changes, arrivals and departures, new people, new jobs, new phases of life. And this is so noticeable in the military as one is rarely assigned for more than three years to any one place or position. We get very used to saying goodbye. Most units have institutionalized that fact of life in a traditional hail and farewell party, where the guests of honor are all those arriving and all those leaving in a particular month. Hail and farewell parties, or high buys are a very popular way of acknowledging the constant turnover of people affiliated with the service. I have farewells on my mind, especially lately, because the Badamis are soon going to say farewell to one member of our family. Our German mother's helper and housekeeper is going to America within the next month. Margareta is 18 years old and has been with us almost a year. A year of being in our home from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, plus some overnights when we went on vacation. It's been a year of enjoying her consistently cheerful disposition, even when the rest of us were at our grumpiest. It's been a year of experimenting with German and American recipes. We found out together that sour cream just isn't the same in the German store, that American salted butter results in terrible German prune cake. She has learned to fix Italian spaghetti sauce and American apple pie, while I've become pretty good at German fruit cake and some of the German meats. It's been a year of comparing German and American ways to make beds, fold pillowcases, and set tables. We've both had a little adjusting to do. It's been a year of speaking English some days in exchange for German other days, with an occasional lesson in Bavarian just for fun. Thanks to Margareta, we celebrated Nicholas Tag on December 6th. St. Nicholas left candy and fruit for our children at Christmas time, and we all learned to sing some German Christmas songs. Thanks to Margareta, we attended a real German neighborhood fashion party and saw her crowned queen. Thanks to Margareta, we hung Easter eggs on pussy willow branches at Easter, ate that special lamb-shaped cake, and found out that German jelly beans taste different from American jelly beans. Watching Margareta handle house cleaning, I learned a few things about my own inefficiencies. I used to hold back from tackling those unpleasant big jobs. I used to announce a week in advance that I must polish the silverware soon. And then every day I would say, I must find the time to polish the silver today. I remember the first time I mentioned to Margareta that the silver ought to be polished within the next few days. Within one hour, she had everything set up, silver polished, rinsed out, dried, and lined up on the counter. No big deal and no announcements. Just clear some space, start a job, and see it through. It was a very good lesson for me. I used to keep the children out of the kitchen while I was cooking. I said it was dangerous, but I felt more that it was a bother. Now I find my daughter breaking eggs into batter, stirring jello, and setting the table, not only having fun, but feeling herself an important participant in the household. That was a very good example for me. I watched Margareta do in one day jobs that would have taken me two or three, and then I analyzed why. She comes in in the morning, begins to work, and doesn't sit down to read the paper, talk on the phone, write letters, or visit anyone for coffee. Once her jobs are done, she can relax. But she doesn't keep pausing and get distracted every 15 or 30 minutes, as 
I so often do. When we went on a trip in January, we learned again how really responsible and mature she was. Our son got the chicken pox, and Margaret gave up her plans for the weekend rather than have the children cared for by another babysitter. I couldn't hand my children over to someone else when they were sick, she explained. Now that she has her letter from her new employers in America, we know how much a part of us she's become. When she leaves for America in a few days, we'll all miss her. Linda, who's four and a half, says she doesn't want her best friend to go away. Scott, who's seven, will lose the only female who can fix his bike as well as Daddy can. My husband will miss the way she teases him and fixes spaghetti and fancy desserts just for him. My mother will miss her friendliness, companionship, and enthusiasm through the day. And I will miss the cheerful and competent helper I've really depended on. Adieu, arrivederci, goodbye, or alfidasein. However you say it, we're sorry to lose Margareta. The good thing about our mobile way of life is that there's always the chance we will meet again. Next week, let's talk about travel. This is Mary Badami in Munich, in Tempo.